Randomness is everywhere in games, whether you see it or not. The damages you take, the type of enemies you encounter, the loot you get and its location, the next level you play, or even the levels themselves with procedural generation. In this video, I'll show you how to get random numbers in Godot and how to use them for specific use cases in games. We won't discuss procedural generation, but if you're interested, I could talk about that in a future video. I'm going to structure this video as a collection of tips. Use the chapters to navigate the video. Let's start. Tip number one, how to get a random number. In Godot, there's a global instance in GDescript on which you can simply call rendf to get a float between 0 and 1 and rendi to get an int between 0 and 2 powers 32, which is that number. These functions use a uniform distribution, meaning every number has the same chance of appearing. We'll talk about how to change that later on. Don't forget to call randomize at the beginning of the script to change the seed of the random number generator. Otherwise, Godot uses the same and you'll get the same output every run. You can call randomize once. This is the easiest way to get a random number as it doesn't require any instance. Tip number two, how to get a random number in a specific range, like from 0 to 9. This is especially useful when you want to randomly pick an item in an array, for example. The simplest trick is to use rendi. Using the modulo operator, we can limit the output by doing rendi modulo upper boundary minus lower boundary minus 1 plus lower boundary. So if you want a number from 1 to 10, you replace upper boundary by 10 and lower boundary by 1. With the modulo 10, you get a number between 0 and 9. And with plus 1, you get a number between 1 and 10. Lower boundary minus 1 is here to remove the excess you have by adding lower boundary. So if you want a number between 20 and 60, so we would do rend i 60 minus 20 minus 1 plus 20. So rend i 41 plus 20. Another example to help you grasp the idea, to get a number from 0 to 9, you would replace the lower boundary by 0 and the upper by 9. So this gives us rend i modulo 10 plus 0, simplified to rend i modulo 10. If you want the same thing with float, you can use rendf, but this time, instead of using modulo, we will multiply, because rendf gives us a number between 0 and 1. We also need to remove the lower boundary to the multiplicand, otherwise we risk going higher than the max number we want. The formula is now rendf times upper boundary minus lower boundary plus lower boundary. With our previous example, from 1 to 10, we have rendf 10 minus 1 plus 1. So rend f times 9 plus 1. You see that we need to remove the lower boundary from the multiplication. Otherwise, if rend f gives us 1, we multiply by 10, so we have 10. But we also add 1, so we now have 11. Let's take our example from 0 to 9. We have rend f times 9 minus 0 plus 0, simplified to rend f times 9. Godot has a built-in function rend range available without an instance, but it returns only float. We'll come back to the RNG class after. So how do you use that? Let's say I want to choose randomly between multiple colors or songs stored in an array. To get a random item, I can use the size of the array as a limit. If we have an array of size 10, the indexed use will go from 0 to 9. In short, this gives us rend i modulo your array dot size. Tip 3. I told you before the distribution of the numbers was uniform, meaning every number has the same chance of appearing. In some cases, you want to skew the distribution. In other words, you want a weighted distribution, meaning you give more weight to some numbers or objects. A very simple example is to check if the result of rendf is above or below a number. If you have three objects and you want 10% chance for one, 60% for the second, and 30% for the last, you can simply check the result of rendf this way. If result is inferior to 0 0.1, pick the first object. If result is inferior to 0 0.7, pick the second object. Else, pick the third object. Because every number between 0 and 1 has the same chance of appearing, statistically, a number inferior to 0 0.1 will appear 10% of the time. A number between 10 and 70 will appear 60% of the time. And the rest is 30%. 
This works well if you have a few values, but a more common way would be to use a dictionary, though it becomes a more complex problem because you probably need an algorithm to do that. I won't go into the details, but if you want to see, there's a proposal on GitHub where they discussed integrating this into Godot, and someone has provided a basic implementation in GDScript. Tip number four, if you want more control on your number generation, or if you want multiple independent random number generator, like for example, if you want to be able to reproduce the same random numbers for each session, you can use the class random number generator and make an instance of it. You do var rng equal random number generator dot new, and now you have an independent random number generator. To use it, you call rng dot randomize, just like the one in the global scope. Or you can tell it to use a specific seed by doing rng.seed is equal to 3405, for example. By using the same seed across multiple runs, you'll always get the same sequence of numbers. You might think that it defies the use of randomness, but think about Minecraft, for example. The world is generated using an algorithm that utilizes randomness. If you use a specific seed, you have the same output. So it can be useful for that, or for debugging, for example. Another use could be for speedrunners. If you have randomness in your game, they could decide to avoid the randomness by playing with a known seed. State is another parameter that you can use to save and restore the state of your RNG. This can be especially useful for debugging an algorithm that would use random numbers. If you know the algorithm has a problem at the hundredth number generated, you could use the state to go back to this point. Creating an instance of random number generator gives you other advantages. You gain access to rendf range and rendi range. These functions will give you a random number between a number and another using float or int. The last interesting function is rendfn. This function gives you a random float between 0 and 1, but instead of a uniform distribution, it uses a normal one. A normal distribution has the form of a bell, meaning the values closer to the center of the curve have have a higher chance of appearing. You can use the mean and deviation parameters of the function to change the shape of your normal distribution. This is useful if you want, for example, to quickly decide what types of enemies should be spawned. Most of the time, normal enemies will be spawned, and when the values are in the extremes, you spawn super weak or super strong enemies, for example. It's similar to what we saw in the previous tip. Tip 5. How to make your random less random. This sounds weird, but hear me out. Let's say you have a multiplayer game with multiple maps, and the player can let the computer decide random maps for them. If you have something purely random, it's possible that the same map will be selected twice following, or even more than that. What you probably want is to make the player play all the maps, but in random order. Thankfully, there's an easy way with Godot. Let's say we have our maps in an array. You're starting to be used to having things in arrays, right? We can randomize the order inside of the array using yourArray.shuffle. This shuffles the array in place, meaning that the array itself is shuffled. You might want to separate the array holding your values in a specific order from another array that you shuffle. For that, make sure to copy your values using duplicate first. This is to ensure Godot creates a copy of the original array to the new array. If you simply use the equal operator, you don't have a copy but a reference, meaning that your new array points to the other one. If you change values inside the new array, it changes the original array too. So be careful about that. If you want to know why this is the case, learn more about the difference between reference and value. This is coming from C and C++. Tip number six, noise. Random values are cool, but sometimes they are too random. What I mean by that is there's no connection between each random values. While this is wanted for selecting a damage value, for example, this can be terrible when creating terrain. Let me show you an example first. I have a simple shader deforming the vertices of a terrain. By default, it's completely flat. Now let's move each vertices using a random value. As you can see, the result is really chaotic. And if you really wanted to make a playable terrain, this wouldn't work. That's where noise can be used, but not every type of noise. Specifically in games, we often talk about Perlin noise, Brown noise, or Open Simplex noise. But note that there are a lot of different noises with different behavior and use cases. 
Open simplex noise is nice because it gives us random values that are nicely connected. This means you won't go from 0 to 1 from one value to the next. Rather, you'll smoothly transition between 0 and 1 with intermediate values. To give you a better understanding, I have two textures where I decided to color each pixel using randomness. On the left, I use a random value for each pixel. And as you can see, there's no shape and there's a lot of discontinuity. On the right, I use open simplex noise. You see the result is much smoother and by changing the different noise parameters I can change the shape of my noise. If I go back to my terrain example and use the noise instead of the random values, I get a much smoother result. To use the noise, I sample the value of the pixel at a specific location on the noise texture, and I use the result to control the height of my map. Godot has a built-in noise generator, so you can use it visually by creating a texture with it, or you can directly sample values if you want to use it differently. Noise is used everywhere, in terrain generation, in shaders to change the colors of things, or to make them move randomly. If you want to learn more about noise, I recommend this video which goes in much more detail. One last cool thing with noise, when generating the texture, you can make it seamless, meaning the noise texture itself will tile nicely. This is awesome when making terrain or when you want to scroll the texture to have a wind effect, for example, without having any visible seams. With that, I think I've covered most of the basic cases we encounter when making games. If you have other things you want to talk about or little tips you use, please share them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, bye!